Hey, I'm Brian, CMO of Master Labs. This is Damir, the CTO, and uh, we're so, so excited to be uh, literally days away from going on to Mainnet. So I um, want to thank everybody for this, uh, the incredible uh, end of this journey, uh, and we're going to be birthing Massa to the world, and we're extremely excited, to say the least. Uh, we're doing this AMA specifically for the initial node runners only, because you guys are the first participants. And for everybody else, uh, for all node runners, for our, anybody else, um, we're going to be doing a live AMA. It's going to be live uh, very, very, very soon. And we're going to post all the information on Discord where you can ask your questions. And, uh, and yeah, and we can do it. So uh, so welcome, Damir. And uh, I guess our first question is, uh, who are the initial node runners? Yeah, hello, everyone. So the initial node runners are about a thousand, a bit more, a thousand plus people who are going to be there to support the infrastructure of the network before we even reach Genesis. So before the very first block, that's because we want to be more decentralized than the others. We want to, people to be already there and running the network before it launches. That way, uh, at the moment, the network launches on the 15th of January. Uh, it's already supported by a huge network of nodes and very robust. So, of course, there are advantages to be the, among these initial node runners. Uh, especially, you're gonna have you're gonna have to produce more blocks. You're gonna be there among the first ones. There's not gonna be many people initially, so the rewards will be higher as well. So that's one thing. But to be a bit more precise about who are exactly these initial node runners, uh, well, the initial node runners are the people who meet all of the following criteria. First they need to have at least 200 points by the end of testnet 24. So they need to have been good node runners uh, before. They need also to have at least 300 points between testnets 23 and 26 included. Uh, that's to make sure that they've been active recently, not just that they run nodes a long time ago and then disappear. They must not be from one of the forbidden countries we have listed. They need to be registered on the dashboard. They need to have claimed all their testnet staking scores on the dashboard. They need to have set their main address, main massa address on the dashboard. They need to have passed KYC. And they need, they need to have requested that uh, to get initial roles instead of coins in the dashboard when it was asked. So if all those criteria are met, uh, they, these people should receive initial roles and uh, these initial roles appear in the initial roles file that we have linked in our announcement. Uh, and that's on the Genesis Ledger uh, repository of the Massa Foundation GitHub. So you'll know if, you're, if you see your main address in there, it means that you are an initial node runner. Then congratulations. So first of all, uh, where are all these node runner, initial node runner roles taken from? Well. Uh, the way it works is that uh, we're going to combine all your testnet rewards plus your testnet bonus. And from all of these, we are going to take 30%. These 30% are the ones that are unlocked initially. The rest is vested. And from these 30%, we are going to try to fit as many roles as possible. Reminder that one role equals 100 coins. And we're going to credit these roles as initial roles in the ledger. So. That's how it works, and that's how, why that's what you see appear in the initial roles file. Now, uh, if you're not in the initial nodes runner uh, ledger, it doesn't mean that you will never be able to run nodes. Of course, uh, actually, most node runners didn't even meet those criteria, so uh, but they can still become stakers. Basically, uh, all they have to do is after January 15th, they can buy roles just like they did in, uh, on the testnet and become normal stakers in the mainnet. So that's how it works for the roles. Now for the node setup. The node setup resembles testnet very closely. So it's almost the same as the testnet. We didn't want to change many things. The only change is, is that now we, you, you have an initial wallet. And this initial wallet is the one that matches the address you have given as your main massa address. That's the wallet you need to use. So uh, that's for the node setup. Then for the specifications of the node itself, uh, as we announced, we expect eight cores, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and one terabyte of disk, and a decent internet connection. So the network usage would be similar to the, what you had on testnet. Well, 
for all of these, the information is written in a little tutorial. Uh, and this tutorial, we have linked it in the announcement. It's on docs.vasa.net. And uh, in this tutorial, it's going to guide you through installing the node, setting it up, importing your wallet, and also uh, checking that everything is OK, that the node is running properly, and that we're sure that it's going to function properly when we launch. So yeah, uh, that's about it for the big introduction. Now I'm going to start answering questions. So feel free, Brian, to listen. Uh, that's great. Um, so people are asking, like, uh, one of the questions is, what can I do on the blockchain uh, before Genesis? So this is a bit unusual. Um, many times when blockchains launch, uh, they start producing blocks right away, etc. In the case of Massa, uh, our genesis is a bit deferred. So the block production will only start on the 15th of January. And before that, there's no blocks. So the only thing you can do is set up your node, make sure it works. You cannot produce blocks. There's no transactions that can go through. You cannot buy rolls, sell rolls. Nothing goes through before the 15th. So that's that's the answer for what you can do before Genesis. OK, and then can people change their node servers uh, from the one that they had for testnet? Yeah, no worries. You can always change your node servers. It doesn't have to be the same IP addresses as the ones you used on testnet. Uh, of course, if after launch, after the 15th, you change servers uh, while running, uh, the only thing you need to make sure is that uh, you don't have downtime, otherwise you might uh, get your role sold, but otherwise everything is fine. Everything There's no penalty for changing servers. Okay. Uh, somebody wrote in that their node doesn't reach more than 10 in connections if they use IPv4 and uh, no more than two with IPv6. So is that normal? Uh, yes. <laughs> so that depends on the ratio between uh, how many nodes are connected to you and how many nodes you are connected to. but. Uh, as long as you have at least one in connection and multiple out connections, you're you're safe. You're safe. You're good. You're set. Okay. As somebody wants to also know um, how many nodes are running on mainnet and how they can find out. Uh, in other words, like when they check a get status, the known peers seems to show the number of nodes that they have from their own node, but not the global number of running nodes on the whole mainnet network. So. If you remember correctly, during testnet, we had an idea about how many nodes there were in the network. That's because we asked the people to declare their node directly on the Discord. But here it's the mainnet. We are uh, we don't have control over the mainnet. Uh, nobody has control over the mainnet. Nobody can even know exactly how many nodes there are in total. Uh, the, and this actually is there to guarantee the safety and the anonymity of node runners. So the idea here is that Nobody can know how many nodes in total there are in the network. OK. Um, can people use um, Massa Node Manager and Massa Station, or can they use a Docker? Uh, well, we didn't have the time to set up uh, the Massa Node Manager, unfortunately. We hoped to do it, but we didn't have the time, uh, nor a Docker. So we currently don't provide any Node Manager nor official Docker images. Um, it is, however, something we consider in the near future because it's going to really uh, ease the access to the system. That being said, uh, right now it's mostly initial node runners that are running the system. So we 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 are among people who know what they're doing. Uh, they know that they cannot use something that's not trusted. So, for example, if they end up using uh, I don't know a Docker image that's being created by someone who is not approved, not reviewed, there's a chance that inside this Docker image there's going to be some kind of spyware. And we uh, that's gonna steal your coins essentially, and we don't want this to happen, especially since Massa Labs cannot provide support for non-official tools. That's that's the current state of things. Okay. Um, and somebody wanted to find out if they can switch their uh, their node provider once they started, and if so, will there be any penalties? Uh, there's no penalties uh, for changing servers. Uh, just make sure you update your IP address uh, to re to remain routable in the configuration file. Make sure that uh, when you switch, you don't have at any point two different nodes running with the same wallet. That's going to cause you penalties. Otherwise, if you stop one cleanly and start uh, a new one cleanly, there's no issue. OK. Uh, somebody asked a question, which I thought was interesting. Um, will node runners be able to act as validators for external val delegators uh, in the near future? Uh, well, in Massa, we have disabled delegation uh, on purpose to preserve decentralization. 
Uh, so the node software provided by Massa Labs uh, does not support delegation and will not support it in any foreseeable future. Okay. Um, <laughs> then somebody asked, um, with, um, they said that 100% of the core of their CPU is being used by the node, 100% uh, of one core. So is that normal? Um, all the time the node isn't doing anything and it wasn't the case before. So, you know, is the cause identified or is there going to be a patch? Like what's going on there? Okay, so uh, it's true that we are now in a regime that we haven't seen a lot before. We are pre-Genesis with a lot of nodes. So that's something we haven't really had a lot in the testnet. Uh, and indeed, there seems to be a tiny issue that uh, brings the CPU usage of one core to 100% uh, in the current state of things. But we checked it. We found the issue. It's a minor issue. It's not causing any issues. It's not going to uh, stop your node. It's not going to prevent it from launching. It's just a tiny annoyance that only applies pre-Genesis. So after Genesis, it's not going to be an issue anymore. That being said, we have already provided a fix for this, if you look at our GitHub. And we are waiting to combine it with another tiny fix to release a mainnet uh, version main one .1, uh, that fixes these tiny bugs. But they're just annoyances. So you don't even have to update anything uh, when we release it. Uh, if you stay at main one zero, you'll be good at launch. Okay, and the last te technical question that we have is, uh, you know, does the password to run the node uh, still need to be the same as the password of the wallet? So, um, passwords act on wallets. So, uh, for example, when you have created your wallet with Massa Station, you have added a password. Uh, this is the password for that wallet in particular, that wallet file. So, when you import that wallet file in your client, uh, it's going to ask you for this password. So you need to give the same password. If, however, you have imported only directly a private key into your uh, client, then there's no password asked because the password only applies to this file. Now, it's true also that the node itself has its own wallet, its own wallet file. <clears throat> so uh, either you directly put your wallet file uh, in the node uh, itself, or you go through the client as we recommend. Uh, if you go to the client, when you notch the node, initially it will not have a wallet file. So it's going to ask you for a password. Here, you're free to set anything you want. Uh, it's a node password. Uh, you can set, for example, the same as your wallets uh, or a different one. Uh, it doesn't prevent your node from running and uh, uh, accepting incoming private keys from the client. So great. So now we're going to talk about uh, questions involving rewards. Uh, we got a question that's kind of all about penalties. So if a node misses too many blocks, roles are sold. Uh, how many? Is it just one? Because in testnet, all the roles were sold. And you know they want to know, is, okay, is it going to be sold one by one? Or how's that going to work? Uh, so it's going to work actually the same as testnet. But let's be clear. So in testnet, what you had is if when you're selected to produce a block, you don't produce it, and it happens more than 70% of the, of the time, uh, then your nodes, your roles, sorry, were sold. Uh, and by sold, I don't mean they're slashed. It's not a penalty. You just deactivate it because you're inactive. By, be, by deactivated, it means that your roles are uh, deactivated. They, they stop becoming active. You lose your roles. However, they are reimbursed at most four cycles later as coins. So you get reimbursed after a couple hours back to your uh, back to your wallet. So that's node, that's essentially inactive node deactivation. It's not any kind of slushing. The, no, the coins are never lost. On the other hand, if, however, you use the same wallet to run multiple nodes, then there's something called slashing for multi-block production. So if your, let's say your wallet is selected to produce a block at a given slot, and for some reason you have multiple nodes that run this wallet and produce a block at the same time at this point, then you get slashed, but the slashing is one roll. And as soon as this one roll is slashed, you don't get reimbursed for it, you lose it. And however, um, your node detects this, we have added a little safety, uh, your node sees this and crashes. Your node, your node puts an alert that it has detected some double staking and crashes. So this prevents you from losing more afterwards. Uh, so that means another thing, that means that there's no way uh, to do any kind of load balancing with a different node at the same time. Uh, so you basically need to make sure that uh, if you want to run multiple nodes, 
that use different wallets, that you split your coins between those wallets. Okay. And um, uh, one last thing, sorry, oh, if, yeah, if, yeah. You, if you run uh, two nodes behind the one same IP, it works. However, if you run, oh. run more than two nodes behind the same IP, you get issues. That's it. Okay, so you can do two, but that's 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 the most you can do. Yeah. Okay. Um, if uh, somebody had noticed that there's two accounts of Massive Labs that have large initial roles, so whose accounts are they with the seventeen thousand five hundred roles? Okay, so those are two Massa Labs technical accounts. Uh, now the majority of the initial roles are still owned by the initial node runners. But those Massa Labs accounts are there to stabilize the network in case uh, many initial node runners just don't show up. Uh, so if, let's say, a, a big amount of the initial node runners for some reason don't show up, we don't want the network to experience difficulties at launch. So we want to make sure that somebody is there. So that's what these uh, roles are there for. However, once the date of the 15th of January is reached, uh, there's going to be uh, many, many roles, just for example, just for the node runners, we're talking about 800,000 roles that are going to be uh, built. And uh, when the testnet rewards pour in and get uh, unlocked. So the idea is that uh, the contribution of uh, Massa labs after that will become negligible. Uh, and this is to maintain decentralization. Okay. Um, is it possible to stake on one single node from multiple wallets? Um, somebody's planning to provide staking as a service feature uh, since there's no delegation in the Massa network. So technically, uh, you can have the same node stake with multiple wallets. That's for sure. However, um, there's a legal obstacle here is that if you look at our community charter, so if you look at our GitHub in the root of the GitHub, at the bottom of the readme and at the root of the GitHub, there is something called the community charter. And uh, this essentially is some kind of license that limits the number of uh, tokens that can be delegated by, uh, by custodials to about 1 million. So above 1 million tokens, uh, you cannot do it by license. Okay. And uh, I guess the last question is just about rewards in general. I mean, as a node runner, what brings you rewards and how is the uh, allocation and distribution of the rewards managed for individuals that are running the Massa nodes and uh, what factors influence the rewards received? So um, basically, you get rewards every time you pro produce a block or every time you produce an endorsement and it gets included, essentially. So you get rewards very often. Uh, and uh, the frequency at which you receive them and uh, their amounts are proportional to the fraction of the roles you have compared to the total amount of active roles. So the more roles you have uh, and the, the more you get of these block rewards. Another source of rewards is the inclusion of operations. So if there's transactions, roll buys, roll sales with non-zero fees going through and you include them in your block, uh, you're going to get uh, a percentage of the fee from that operation. Okay, great. So, uh, so that's about all the questions that we have for the initial node runners. Um, you know, as I say, we're going to be doing um, a larger uh, AMA, uh, which is going to be live for the whole community uh, about mainnet, and we'll be doing many more after that. Um, yeah, and I want to thank you for the questions and thank you, Damir. And do you have any final words, Damir, as we head into mainnet? No, I just want to offer my words of uh, first my my all my uh, gratitude to the initial node runners because they're the ones who are maintaining this uh, insane infrastructure, <laughs> and uh, thank you all for your participation and uh, well see you on uh, on Genesis. Okay, sounds great, and uh, yeah, very 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 excited and uh, looking forward to it. It's coming right up next week. Cheers.